you know, looking forward to the Xbox and the future of Xbox, I think there is some cautious optimism going on within the fan base right now, uh, myself included. You know, like, I do think that Microsoft needs to figure out what they want to do in terms of, like, their exclusivity and, you know, are they going to be able to get people on board without having a clear-cut you know, idea of what's going to be exclusive and what's not and things like that. I think that we're sort of living in a little bit weird time where you have some people that think, you know, because things are changing a bit, but I don't think that they're changing to the amount that some fans think, you know, like some fans are of the belief that there's not going to be exclusives or whatever. Like you're not going to see a time where God of War and Uncharted and The Last of Us come to Xbox and Mario and Zelda and you know those those games are coming to Xbox, right? So you know I you definitely need to have your exclusive games kind of sorted and an idea of what you're gonna do um, in the future. You know you have to be a little bit um, you have to be a little bit open with your fans. You know I understand it's a business and so you can't always be like that. But this should be a very interesting video because I'm sure that a lot of you have some interesting takes on xbox and the future of xbox and things like that so let's get started i'm crap gamer crap gamer reviews and i appreciate everyone that watches the videos please like the video share it out subscribe if you haven't already done so it would mean a lot to me if you would do that now um with that being said again i do daily gaming content it's something that i enjoy doing it's it's just a lot of fun and you know i try to be informative yet fun so you know anyway uh with that being said again we are looking at you know what the future holds for xbox um how's this stuff going to work uh, like the next xbox and all that kind of stuff um you know uh, just just to be to be clear we're starting to see a lot of interesting things creep out um you know a lot of people are kind of talking about you know the ps5 pro i have it it's like you know we're kind of looking around going okay well How's this, uh, you know, working out for Xbox fans, you know, not having a mid-gen refresh? I think it's working out fine. I think it's also working out fine for PlayStation, right? Uh, they're the only game in town when it comes to this stuff. And maybe if Microsoft were doing something, um, you know, like with a mid-gen refresh, maybe we would have a, a more competitively priced console from Sony. Uh, but, you know, that remains to be seen. Uh, but a lot of people are, you know, when you bring up, that the PS5 Pro is such a stellar piece of hardware. A lot of people talk about the, you know, the whole quote from Microsoft about it being the large, their next console being the largest technical leap um, that we've, that they've ever seen. So, you know, obviously it's been a, a, a very quiet bit of time, the fourth anniversary celebration of the Series X and S, and this specific topic has led to an interesting discussion about what Microsoft is cooking up for next generation. Uh, if you cast your mind back to February, there's a quote from Sarah Bond about plans to deliver the largest technical leap that you've ever seen in a hardware generation, which immediately attracted a lot of interest. To be honest, it sounds like a lot of people are skeptical right now as a lot of fans are suggesting that this is nothing but marketing speak that won't live up to the hype, with many questioning how Microsoft could deliver such a leap anyway. Uh, that said, the rumored Xbox handheld could be what she was referring to, while others are suggesting that AI and the cloud could have a heavy influence on the next console, and some believe it means nothing at all. If you look at some of the comments, it says it means whatever marketing team wants it to mean. Uh, they always say things like this. Uh, they'll point to a single number like T-flops or something and call it a huge technical leap. Uh, we're in the age of diminishing returns. We'll never see another leap like we did going from PS1 to PS2, for instance. Don't expect that. Uh, someone else said nothing. Simply marketing just like Apple introduces the most powerful iPhone every year. Uh, someone else said, as others said, it's just marketing speak happens every console, every generation. That said, if you're looking for what the Xbox is likely to actually be doing next generation, the FTC leak document shows at least what have been considering and that's probably changed in the documents they describe a hybrid game platform leveraging both native hardware and cloud computing or render games described as cloud hybrid 
games. This is similar to what Microsoft Flight Simulator does, but for all titles. Additionally, they were looking to use AI machine learning for upscaling their own PSSR as well as frame generation. If people respond well to the idea of building streaming uh, into games, then it could be a massive technical leap, but that conversation around offline gaming is going to be a problem. So again, I have to, I have to kind of agree with that aspect. You can't have a constant always online only console um where you're streaming any part of that in my opinion right like you can't do that um somebody else said a very powerful hybrid handheld someone else says ai based upscaler similar to dlss pssr and frame generation similar to uh dlss uh so again you know a lot of people have a lot of different ideas and things like that about what it could be uh pro only has the basics of ai think ai for image processing frame generation but then also for logic um it could be anything so everyone has kind of a opinion on this stuff uh, microsoft obviously probably has an idea themselves uh, about what they kind of want to you know bring to the the forefront and things you know we'll see if that's something that they can actually do if they can achieve something that gets people excited about you know the future of xbox then i think that would be really cool um but i also think that you have to have a situation where you have fans who are kind of hyping up you know the platform as well you know it doesn't make sense to to have a situation where we're not getting um you know amazing games and things like that that's the most important thing like i think trying to do you know something that is like a, a gimmick which i think like using cloud stuff would be a bit gimmicky I think that stuff is exactly what we don't need. You know, don't bring like the gimmick stuff to the table. You need to have like some some honest to goodness, great games, and they gotta just play great, look great, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and, and and from that point on, you move on and you go, okay, well, you know, what else can we do? Like to me, it just has to be the amazing games, and there can't be any substitute for that. You know, it just has to be. Um, the games first and, and until they do that I don't know that anybody will take um, Xbox super seriously like I hope that they obviously continue to do well and I, I, I hope that they continue to kind of bring um, the people together into you know a, a cohesive unit of gaming you know like I think that's what we're sort of missing at this particular point but gaming used to be so much more than what it is right now so it's kind of unfortunate but maybe they do something good you know i mean listen people could you know surprise you you know we're kind of um at the situation right now where you know at, they might introduce the handheld next year or they might introduce the handheld and you know uh the other console next year and then what we could see from that point is you know this year we could see the xbox series x and s take off a little bit i mean if you think about it they do have a couple of good games at least time exclusives with indiana jones in the great circle as well as stalker 2 which looks like it's going to be uh pretty incredible uh it really just kind of comes down to um you know what's coming out and and and, and what people are, are going to be expecting sort of long term so you know honestly um, like I've said all along, it really kind of comes down to Microsoft doing um, the right thing, doing things right for the fans and worrying about what the fans want instead of a situation of worrying about, um, you know, kind of not worrying about the fans. Like I just feel like uh, for some whatever reason that they've really kind of crapped on the fans for a little while. Maybe they're realizing that, hey, they really damaged their brand um over the years by not paying attention to what we're asking for so you know again i'm looking forward to them taking some things out of their old playbook from the xbox 360 days maybe that's something that could you know change how we kind of see things um but we'll see you know um it's going to be really really interesting to see how microsoft handles these things and how fans react to it you know more than anything else i honestly feel like that's what we need to see and, and again it would be great to see microsoft kind of be that that competitive uh company like they used to be before you know uh, and i just feel like they've kind of missed out 
on that kind of stuff in the past and and you know now is the good time to kind of reiterate as to you know hey and, and remind people that xbox is a good experience it's a fun experience and you know really um you know there's not a whole lot of other companies out there that can match what they're doing you know whether it be game pass or having first party lineup that includes halo and call of duty you know and gears of war it's crazy to me but uh let me know what you guys think what do you guys think about the future are you guys uh into the ps5 pro sound off rate come subscribe rack them up crap gamer out